It has all been about making Jesus known. Jesus went to the cross as he said he would, as the Bible said he would, according to the scriptures. And he rose again on the third day and he appeared to his disciples a number of times. And the last time we talked about when Jesus appeared on the shore of Galilee before the disciples and restored the apostle Peter, he asked him those questions and he said, it was all the same. He's like, Peter, do you love me? And he says, of course, you know, I love you. And Jesus, bottom line, told him, then you feed my sheep, you follow me. And we pick it up. There he is talking his, to his disciples. You know this passage so well out of Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. When I was at New Orleans Theological Seminary in the main building, there was a giant rug that had this circle with all this scripture on there. And the focal point of that place was for all of us to remember that Jesus said, go and tell, share the gospel. That's what our lives are supposed to be about. Jesus spoke to them. And he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all to observe what I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So simple. I bet you if we tried together by the end of this hour, before it became noon, you could have that memorized. <clears throat> and in Sunday school, I talked about you know, why do we make Jesus known? Why do we go tell people about Jesus? Do we not know that Jesus commanded us to do so? In the shorter version there in the Gospel of Mark, he in fact said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature or to all creation. You say, well, we know that. And I bet you if I... If I ask for, for you to, I'm often asking you to raise your hand, whether or not in re, you know, to really do it or just think about it. Is everyone in agreement that's what Jesus said? Do we believe that Jesus was serious when he said it? Do we believe that's what he wants us to do? We don't really believe it was just for those 11 disciples, do we? No, we believe by extension and through all the ages for the last 2,000 years, it has been the command, it has been the commission, it has been the call on all people who follow Jesus in faith to do what he says. You say, oh, is that what it's all about? I'm supposed to do what Jesus said. I'm glad you explained it to me. Saying, now what was the shorter version of that? Jesus said to go share the good news, the gospel, who Jesus is, that he, he died for our sins and by faith you can know him. And if you know him by faith, you have that home in heaven and you have that life here that starts where Jesus said that, that he has come that we have life, life abundant. And we know that leads to life eternal. You say, oh, is that what it's all about? Now that you've explained that to me and I'm in agreement with it, I can just cut it off right there. And your lives would be forever changed. You say, you know, in fact, so this is Sunday school. It's like, I'm going to go to Walmart after this. You know, and the first person I come to, I'm going to let them know that Jesus loves them and that they can know him too. And just and the, and the door is open there. I will just share the, the whole gospel with them. And if not today, it'll be sometime tomorrow, maybe Tuesday. I don't know. I'll, I'll get to it. But I know that now that I know what I'm supposed to be doing, I'll go do it because Jesus said. And if Jesus said it, I should do it. Is there anyone here who would say, Oh, I don't care what Jesus said. I'm not going to do that. I mean, a follower of Jesus Christ would never say the words of Jesus. Pish posh. No, I'm not going to do that. But you watch what we, you hear what we say, but you watch what we do. And you say, there is some disconnect in what we hear, what we believe, what we agree. That is a great idea. What we should do. In fact, we will spend upteen Times discussing and talking about how great it is to follow a Savior such as Jesus, that he has given us such wisdom and insight for living. He knew exactly what we need to do. 
I know that He has plans for my life and a purpose for my life, and I am constantly seeking for the will of God to be revealed in my life. I just let you know that God's will for your life has been revealed so many times. In fact, you hear versions of it, pieces of it each and every Sunday. Every time you're in, you're here, if you're not paying attention, it is about following Jesus as Lord and Savior and doing what He says. But maybe that's just a little too simplistic. Maybe some folks want a 12-point program about how to have a better life. I've got to give you a... I'll give you a two-point program about having, as not, not to steal from anyone, the best life ever. One, know Jesus. Two, follow Jesus. I know that won't fit into a 150-page book. I know it's not going to be on Amazon as a bestseller. You could just write that down. We wouldn't make any money selling that. But it's the truth that sets you free. Is it about, so there's, the question is, what is your motivation? Why should I feel led? What would get me up in the morning to do what Jesus said? You know, and I'm not saying a coffee cup changed my life, but this is a good reminder of me, for me. It says, y'all need Jesus. And for a little while, that was just one of those kind of punchline kind of things. You know, we see people who are just acting out of order and we say, oh, definitely y'all need Jesus. I mean, that was, you know, how that worked out. But as I look at that more and more, it was kind of just like the a catalyst of the bring together my motivation. And as I was thinking about these things all week long and last night I was looking at that cup and I was thinking, that is so true. And that's that I didn't know that people didn't need Jesus, but... I thank the Lord for a servant who brought that to me and reminded me and ties us all together. Because the answer is, it's like, why should we be doing this? Why should we go out into all the world and preach the gospel, share the good news, tell them all about Jesus, how he's changed my life? Because definitely they all need Jesus. If they didn't, why would I go tell them? This isn't this isn't rocket science. This isn't high-level math. You know, you don't have to conjugate Latin verbs or anything to understand this. I mean, it's there is a need. God sent His Son into the world because He loves us, and whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. And there's a whole lot built in here about what this is all about. I really do wish, and I'm not trying to be that way, that it was, that it could be so simple to say, well, what you really need to do is just do what Jesus said. He said, go tell people about him. He said, well, how do I do that? I said, well, do you know Jesus? I mean, that's step number one. Yes. He is, he is, he is my Lord and my Savior. If you can answer those questions, yes, then you should be able to tell people how you came to know Jesus and what he's doing in your life today. And what you know he'll be doing for you in the days to come. If I know that Jesus was powerful enough to save me and that Jesus is blessing me now, I know Jesus keeps his promises. He's going to be blessing me tomorrow. I just know that. You know, if you can keep that together in your head, you can tell anybody about Jesus. And if that confuses you, just if you, understand, if you need to write down John 3, 16, you go right ahead. Carry that with you. Study it. Look at yourself in the mirror. Watch yourself say it. And if you get confused, ask yourself some questions. If you're not sure how it works out, call me, text me. Set me down on a Wednesday night or even after service today and say, Pastor Bob, explain this to me. God sent his own son into the world. Why? Because he loves you. He loves us all to provide a way for all of us to have a home in heaven. And whoever believes and entrusts their lives over to him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible tells us, he told, Paul told the Roman church, that if you believe that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead, that the resurrection was in fact true, and you believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord, then you are in fact saved, saved because you know the truth that sets you free, 
And you are testifying that it is true in your life. You believe it. You trust in it. Now Jesus said, go out and, and tell them, make disciples. Let me just unpack that for a few minutes. It says that Jesus said that he had all power and authority was been given to him. By who? God the Father. In response to Jesus' obedience, Jesus was exalted, lifted up, humble servant, died on the cross, resurrected, and we are told, and Paul spoke at length about this in the, in the second chapter of the book of Philippians, that God highly, highly exalted him, talking about Jesus, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that that name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, everywhere, Jesus is in charge. And at some point, everyone will bow down before him. The question is, will you do that now, on this side of eternity, or later when it is too late? If you're wise, you'll bow before Jesus now. Jesus says, I am that man. It's not that he just had the name tag and says, I'm the boss. He was the boss over everything in heaven and earth, under the earth. And said, and there, here is the connecting point. Because Jesus is the authority, the ultimate power. There is no other one. So even come close. He says, therefore, verse 19 you go yes do I have a choice is it a suggestion is it just a good idea from Jesus he thought it was a nice thing for us to do he said no because I have the power and authority over everything so you followers of me you go therefore get up stand up and go and make disciples of all nations now what does that mean some people think, think that means just like, well, I just got to say, well, you know, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is a Savior, and you ought to believe that. All right, any questions? If you believe that, let's just pray a little prayer, and you'll go to heaven. You know, and we have, we've been fighting against, you know, that sort of yes and no. You know, if I say yes to enough things and with biblical questions, then I'm, I'm ready to pray a prayer, and based on my prayer, and that, and that, has anything, and that, and that may not have anything to do with faith, repentance, trusting in God, we just walk people through some steps, and that's not how we get to heaven. More on that on Wednesday nights. Join us about being a better soul winner. Making disciples is showing people how they follow Jesus, how they come to know Jesus. It is, in fact, sharing the good news. It is helping them, it is guiding them, it is shepherding them. When Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. He's talking about you take that word of God and you explain that to them. You feed them, you allow them to graze on that, to fill up on that. That is their daily bread. Let them know who Jesus is. How, and by how you live your life. And also about how you don't live your life. The things you do, the things you don't do. You are the guide for other people. You are the ambassador. You are the representative for Jesus Christ himself, as Paul told the Corinthian church, as if Jesus was explaining it to them himself. You be the peacemaker. You tell them how they know Jesus. You show them what it looks like for someone to be following Jesus. So by your example, as God is working through you, they may come to know him. That God will work through you in what you say. And he will draw them to himself. And they can make that decision in faith. And follow Jesus. But the Lord has called us to be obedient and go and tell. So we shall. So we must. Baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it is an identification about having the new life. So once once you've told them and they and they believe and they trust and they are following Jesus, it is an identification to the faith and Back then it was a clear choice 
of them witnessing to the world that they know the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and they are following Jesus, and they get into the water symbolically showing that the new, the old life has passed away, and they are rising new in the, as a new creation, a new life before everyone, testifying to that truth. And he says, he said, oh God, so I'm supposed to be showing them the way, yes, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. They were with Jesus for three solid years and some change. Jesus spent 40 days after the resurrection just teaching them and hammering it into their little heads, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to them, giving them convincing proofs to say, yes, I am alive and I am sure. And this is, I mean, they just didn't sit around drinking coffee for 40 days looking at the sky and saying, well, you know, what, a, what pretty birds there are out here. You know, I'm sure some of that was going on, but I am sure that Jesus was giving them knowledge about who he was, what he did, and why other folks should know them, know him. You say, how can you make that connection? Because after Jesus said these things and ascended, and they went to Jerusalem and they received on Pentecost Sunday that the Holy Spirit, they were different folks sharing the gospel, healing folks, driving out demons. Just the whole world was transformed around them in obedience to following Jesus. They were living out the Great Commission. They were teaching. They were preaching. They were reaching people for Jesus. Their lives were changed and they were listening and doing. And you say, well, oh, can I just tell, so I just can't tell them that Jesus loves you and so do I and leave it at that? No, because Jesus taught us a whole lot more. Now, if you're not sure, there is a whole big section in the New Testament that talks about what Jesus said and how he expects us to live. In short, and this is very short, the gospel, the good news, who is Jesus? The Sermon on the Mount about love, prayer, forgiveness, service, faith. And not just church stuff, but Jesus stuff. How to forgive people. How to obey, how to obey the Lord. All of that. You know, you know, just as an aside there, one of the ways that we reach people for Jesus is the more you read his word, the more it's in you, and the more you have to share and he was like, we're not too sure what to say. It's like, you know how I was blessed today? And my, I was just reading this passage. And you should be reading uh, some section of God's word every day. And it's going to be a blessing to you. And you ask yourself that question, oh Lord, what would you have me learn from your word today? And you pray about that. And you know, and you tell the condensed version of that and say, I was just, you know, how are you doing today? You know, I came, I came across... Mention the passage. I was just reading in the Gospel of John today. And I say it was such a blessing if I could share that with you. And, you sh and if they let you, share a verse. You say, and you know what that means to me? And you're just telling them what God told you. And pray that's a blessing to them. And you say, then that, that, that may just go over their head. But you know, if you do that enough times, God is going to make a connection with someone else in your life about what the Word of God says. And it tells them that, yes, anyone could read the Word. And it's so simple to have a conversation with God. You are modeling before them what Jesus taught His disciples. To read the Word, to share the Word, to live the Word, to pray for one another. And you can always wrap it up saying, how can I pray for you today? Or do you mind if I pray for, mind if I pray for us right now? And, they, and they, here they are seeing you pray to see that it is... In Jesus' name, what we're praying about, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And they might have thought it was all these and thou's. It took about 10, 15 minutes. It was as complicated as anything. And you just showed them the simplicity of your faith in following Jesus. What a blessing you could be to other people's lives if we only did those simple things consistently and well on a regular basis. So much that Jesus did. You know, and one of the things that encourages me right at the end of this passage, because there are, there are times when I sit there and I say, oh Lord, I just don't know what to do. I don't know, I, you know, I, I'm rattled today. I need your peace. Every morning, 
As part of my morning prayer, I ask for the peace of God to start my day, to calm me down, to, and I am reminded that Jesus is always with me wherever I go, whatever I say, whatever I do. He is with me. And he told them that, his last words he said before, he just took that little ride right up into heaven, faded from their sight. He said, and I am with you always, even to the end of the age, that Jesus is with me, not just with them, not just with me, but with you. You just need to slow your life down and embrace that as words of, in com of, in, of comfort and encouragement and a personal power and affirmation of your faith, the confirmation of your faith to know that the Lord himself is with me always. I am never alone. Even in those moments when circumstances look rough and tough and maybe just overwhelming me and rolling me over and I'm not sure what to do, He is with me. He will never leave me. And when He is with me, He is there to empower me. And by the power of His own Spirit, He is there with me to encourage me, to make me bold, to give me the right words to say, to remind me of His greatness and power. How he has blessed me all this time. And know that I just don't stand before the world by myself. That God himself is with me. And in those moments where I might feel low, I know. That's right. He is with me. And he's not going anywhere. And he never will. And he has called me to observe all that he has commanded me. And when he says observe, he says, it's, it's that sense that we need to watch over what he has given us, as in, as in what he has given us, what he has commanded us, is a gift. It is something that he has entrusted to us. It is a present to each and every one of us who calls themselves a believer in Jesus Christ. He has given us his teachings. He has given us his life. He says, these things are important. Watch over them. Guide them. Protect them. Preserve them in your life. Hold on to them and don't let them go. And they are for sharing in abundance with the world. To be a blessing to others. You know, Jesus could have just talked about anything. He says, he could have said, oh, just tell people whatever you want to. Whatever comes, whatever tickles your fancy. It's okay. No, he said, in particular, you tell them what I have taught you. And he, mean, and he knew and he meant and he took the time aside before he went back to heaven to teach them what they needed to know. If they already didn't know, he reminded them and he says, you go tell them these things. And that's why it's all written down. If we, if we forget what it was, it's like, what did Jesus say? That's why we study his words. Like, what did Jesus say? What was important? What did he say about this? Oh yes, that's right. Jesus said to love them as I have loved, as I as He has loved me. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever wherever I am, wherever whatever I'm doing, Jesus is with me, and He is leading me to teach, tell, and show the world about Jesus. What I know and how I know, I know Him personally. It's not just words in the book. It's my life we're talking about. And he has called me to share my life with him. It's not my life is that my testimony. It's what Jesus has done in my life and what he's continuing to do in my life and what he will do in my life and what he can do in everyone's life. And you know all of this. And I was just sitting there in the last 24 hours just thinking about, you know, we all do need Jesus. And how hard do you have to look at our world? And we were talking about it in Sunday school. And I said, I'm not getting political. And I'm not asking if you watch CNN or Fox News about these uh, student protests over universities' involvement and support of this one side or the other and the conflict that's going on over in the Middle East. But I do know in my own simple way, and you can just look at me and say, oh, that simple man, he just doesn't know. But what I do know is, 
that if there were more folks on those college campuses that knew Jesus, there'd be a whole lot more of peace of Jesus on college campuses and a whole lot less fighting and a whole lot more agreement. Amen. We say, but I already know Jesus. Well, we all need to know Jesus better. You know, if it was a tornado or a flood, we would be, just hear me the right way, we would be getting tractor trailers together and buses to send people out to help and to encourage and to share the gospel with all sorts of folks who are in need. And I pray that likewise, that we go beyond just talking about it and we go beyond praying about it. And I pray that you pray for these situations, these uprisings on these college campuses, that freedom would reign, that common sense would reign, that love would reign, that you know, there's a bunch of Jewish folks who want to go to school who are, in, I'm sure for the most part, not connected to a conflict across the ocean. But yet, they are being restrained and people need to be set free. There needs to be peace. They definitely all need Jesus. And that's why we need to share Jesus, because so many people need to know Jesus and live for Jesus. And I pray the Lord convicts you to pray, to serve, to share. All for the glory of God. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We bow down before you. And yes, the world does need to know Jesus. We've gotten to the point where I know I've been consistently living my life following you. And somehow it appears that the world has changed. And without any intention on my own, I... I may be labeled as some sort of terrorist now in my own nation because I want to keep sharing the gospel, spreading a message of love of the Lord himself. And Jesus, you said that people would hate, would hate me and others who follow you for that very reason, that we are dangerous. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord, for being with us always as we go, as we read, as we share, as we love as we pray, as we serve. May you work through us, Lord, and not in spite of us. All for the glory of God, I pray.